uh my baby's laying on me uh but before i start i did want to say that i get a lot of questions of how old am i and if you're wondering i am 17 and i'm a mother hey guys welcome back to another video i told y'all i was taking my break i told y'all i took my six week break technically since i wasn't posting on youtube but now i'm back and i'm gonna be posting consistently now i don't know how my head is in the frame because i don't have like a camera to to show me but in today's video i wanted to like talk about postpartum and also kind of vlog just so the video isn't only about postpartum yeah i did want to make this video i am that mexican that believes in the cuarentena i tried my best to take care of myself and my mom was the one that took care of me a lot and i feel like it really helped me and i'll be showing y'all the things i used after postpartum what i was eating what my mom fed me really and like fajas wise just overall on postpartum informing y'all and i did want to thank skillshare for sponsoring today's video woohoo y'all know i gotta get my coins for ale andreas period but Skillshare is an online learning community where thousands of inspiring classes are available for creative and curious people. You're able to explore new skills and develop existing interests. All of these videos are made by professionals, teachers, and other creators. Skillshare is available on Skillshare.com, like on your computer or on the app which is how I use it on my phone. For example, the current course I'm taking is, is to improve my filmmaking. Y'all know I make YouTube videos. With the class iPhone Filmmaking, create a cinematic video with your phone by Caleb Babcock and Niles Gray. And what I really like about the course was that they were able to like give clear instructions and also give me tips on filmmaking and editing like for videos of course because this is what i do if this all sounds something you're interested in or something you would like skillshare is offering two free months of premium membership to the first 1000 people who click the link down below in the description box to help you explore your creativity and after that it's only about ten dollars a month yeah but it's really interesting because you can find a whole bunch of videos so yeah let's continue This is how he likes to sleep. I think that all my videos from now on are going to be multiple clips because I find it hard to film now because you know I have to take care of my little one but right now he's calm and he's with my dad I gotta make sure I could do this video now I mean I'm just gonna be talking about everything y'all everything the beliefs myths the bleeding breastfeeding um, how I am now the process of my stomach going down everything even the TMI stuff I'll be telling you guys but I do want to put a big 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 disclaimer that this is just my experience and I really wanted to share it so that's why I'm doing this video and I didn't ask any questions for y'all to ask me but I think I covered everything for the most part I'm in no way a specialist health experience person this was just my postpartum and my cuarentena I tried my best to take care of myself but you know I wasn't like super strict on myself either I don't think it's just a Mexican thing I think it's a Hispanic thing a cuarentena and I'll just be telling y'all what my mom told me not to do to do and i tried my best to do all of it but some things i forgot basically what the quarantine is is after you have birth after you give birth my bad all your pores are open and you need to take care of yourself so they can all close up and you can be healthy fine whatever within the 40 days of giving birth later on in the video i'll talk about what my mom told me not to do okay i wrote this down my mom helped me throughout the quarantena and also the purpose of it is to take care of yourself of course what my mom said is that you have to take care of yourself because if you don't you're not gonna feel it now because you're young but when you're older it'll affect you i never heard any crazy stories but i feel like there is so that's why i just believe in it i just stick to what my mom said okay 
I'm going to be talking about my postpartum from the hospital to my house to the 40 days till now. So yeah, this video might be long and I'm also probably going to be eating. I have this big ass spoon and I also have my acai bowl. So 40 days is approximately 6 weeks and, and even like your doctor tells you it takes your body about 6 weeks for everything to go back to normal. I think I said that wrong but whatever. That's because like all your organs are all over the place, your uterus is still like big and it's like you have a pouch and it needs to shrink back in. But you're swollen, your pelvic muscles are not strong because it, they had to move around while you're giving birth if you had a regular vaginal birth. Yeah, 6 weeks is about 40 days so that's why I think like the 40 day stuff isn't a lie and some of the stuff I say you might be like oh my god that's that's a myth that's not true when I had my baby I still did this and nothing happened to me like, this is why I'm saying like this is just my postpartum this is what I did this is what I'm keep doing and also this video is just like you know like if you're curious and my mom tried her best to take care of me but when she had her kids her sisters took care of her so my mom forgot everything you're not supposed to do you're supposed to do if you know some myths that you believe in comment them down below i'm curious i feel like there's more i'll start with right after birth right after birth you're left with the pouch because your uterus is half the size it was when your baby was in there every 15 minutes they're pushing down on your stomach to like take out all the blood and the very first time they do that it, it hurts like i'm talking about like it feels like they're pinching and it feels like this sting from your uterus and you feel the blood coming down and every 15 minutes they're doing it and every time it hurts but like I feel like every time it hurts less and less and then after the first hour they do it like every 30 minutes I think or every hour I can't remember and I'll be showing y'all a video because I didn't take a picture of my stomach right after birth a few hours after birth actually and then later on in the video I'll show y'all like, the process of it shrinking at birth I tore so I had stitches so that's something I had to recover and then I also pulled my sciatic nerve so that ended up affecting me in my recovery because every time I would move it would hurt my leg for the first few days but the very first time I peed I heard it would sting and so that's what I expected but here is what I did I when I peed I like let it go and then held it back really quick and that part did sting but it didn't sting as bad as I thought it was gonna be so I just let go of the rest of my pee and it did sting and as a poop, I didn't have any trouble. I wasn't constipated. I didn't have it. I didn't have to take any pills. Oh my god, I feel like I'm talking really fast. And all, by the way, I'm gonna be all over the place. But I just have so much stuff on my mind that I want to like get out. Uh, I was not constipated. I was not taking any pills to not be constipated. I was just, I just pooped. As a form of bleeding, um, right after you know the baby comes out, you're bleeding like a lot. Like you don't have anything on. It's just like this plastic thing under you and the blood's just coming down. I didn't really observe, but that's what I think was going on because I had seen the nurse fix like the plastic under my, my body because I guess the blood was just coming down. And they moved me to my recovery room. That's when I started uh, wearing a pad and the underwears they gave me. I didn't bring anything. I'm not that picky with it. I have these mesh underwears, which I thought they were actually comfortable because I was just so exhausted. So there were these big ass pads. I wish I had one but I used them already. And some people put ice on their coochie, but I didn't. I was swollen, but like, not like Jesus Christ swollen. So I just had the pad. I would put on witch hazel pads, which those help so much. <laughs> they just make you feel a lot better. And then I also had that itch spray that they gave me, but I, I was not itchy. I just put it on like I was just like, I'm preventing myself just in case I'm not waiting for me to be itchy I'm just gonna put it on right away and also when you pee they give you like this squishy bottle that you can spray water because you're not really supposed to wipe I don't know like some people say warm water feels better but I liked cold water I would just put cold water because it would make me feel better so throughout the first days your coochie is like the most swollen um, like I said, I wasn't super duper swollen. I had a first degree tear. So I'm just walking past my house. I had a first degree tear. So I only had like a little bit of stitches. It wasn't that bad. The nurses would ask me like this, you, you know, your coochie hurt. And I was like, no, you just feel like really, really swollen. At least I did and it didn't hurt. It would just feel really swollen. And then you were bleeding and it's just like, ugh. Bleeding went down probably within the two days. I can't really remember but somewhere around there it was still kind of a lot and after the first week oh my god I lost it where was I 
after the first week it was like a light flow and I stopped bleeding at four weeks postpartum and also the swollenness went down after a week or so and the stitches dissolved I want to say within the two weeks like I would see the stitches dissolve and they would just fall out and since I pulled my nerve it would hurt like to lay down and move while getting up the first two days was the worst when I pulled my nerve my sciatic nerve and when I slept this is why I couldn't really sleep because if I lay down, it hurts so, so bad. I would be like, <laughs> like that's how bad it hurt. And like my pain tolerance is not that low. Like, it went away within the month. I know that seems like a long time, but slowly it would stop hurting. I pulled it because I pulled one of my legs too much and that was my left leg. So it was my left leg that suffered. Leaving the hospital, my mom told me to cover my ears and cover my head and my body and my feet. Just because our pores are open so you wouldn't trap air and did I listen? <laughs> nope. I actually forgot. I actually looked up like why do people cover their head after birth and some old white tell say that it's to keep your body warm because most of your heat is in your head. And it's true like scientifically your head holds the most heat i believe something like that don't quote me and i also saw that people cover it so that you don't get an infection which is weird because i ended up getting a boob infection so was it true i have no idea i didn't do that i just i had almost covered but not my head and i had realized when i was leaving the hospital i was like oh shit i forgot like a beanie so i just like tied my hair back like this and supposedly I covered my ears like this and the nurses asked me like hey are you like like you know farting and I was like yeah why I was like why she's like oh it's normal it happens to a lot of people it wasn't like super bad it would just be like and it went away within like the first week I gave birth so everything's like going on like you have this pouch your boobs are super sensitive I think even if you don't breastfeed your boobs get sensitive after birth because like you, they think the milk's coming in but then they dry out not right after birth but when I came home they hurt really really bad they were so big I'm talking like high profile fake big boobs and plants um, they looked okay not gonna lie but they did not feel okay so, every time my baby would latch on it would like sting and that leads me to the next topic breastfeeding and at the hospital my baby did not want to latch on this is what the nurses do if your baby doesn't latch on properly or at least this is what my nurses did if your baby has trouble latching on they like squeeze your nipple and they wait till stuff comes out colostrum they try to latch on your baby so they can like get a taste and then try to learn to latch on and it wasn't working still so at the hospital i was giving my baby formula and breastfeeding because he wouldn't like he had to get something down on his stomach I also had to use a nipple guard at the hospital and when I came home for a while it took the whole time I was at the hospital for the baby to get the, the hang of latching on I used a nipple guard for I want to say a week and a half after giving birth but I would not use it every feeding I would use it like every other just so like he can learn with the nipple guard and then he can experience it without the nipple guard and now he's fine so now he latches on like what? And I feel like nursing bras are very, very essential. And I did not bleed or crack from my nipples, but I would just put nipple cream. Well, the first week was the worst. It hurts a lot, but it does get better. It gets no worse than like the first few days or the first week. My milk came in pretty fast, so I feel like that's why my boobs hurt a lot. I wouldn't latch my baby on 24-7. I would pump and then I'll tell my mom like, here's the milk and she'll feed him. Throughout the 40 days, this is what I was told not to do. So I was told not to make force because you could prolapse. What does that mean? I'll put on a screen right here. So like if you make force, you're using those muscles. So something's gonna happen inside you. When you're getting up, ask for help. Don't get up too much. Don't bend down. Don't sleep on your stomach. Don't go out. And I would still go out. And when I would go out and it was windy, I would put cotton in my ears. And I didn't do that right after birth, but I did it the 40 days and yeah just cover yourself if you go out and throughout the first two weeks i would randomly get like cold as hell hot as hell and also i ended up getting fever because of my infection oh i forgot to mention that about breastfeeding but anyways during breastfeeding after a week of giving birth i had an infection on my boob it was called mess mastitis and y'all can look it up like when i was home and i would be hot i would only wear like a tank top and like my pajama pants 
and my mom would like get mad she's like cover yourself why because if like the cold air comes or you're just like normal it's just like bad for your body a cardigan i put on a cardigan not a jacket don't walk around barefoot like on the cold floor wear socks well my boyfriend's mom told me this my mom didn't know this um she said your calves are going to be hurting you're going to be cramping and it's gonna hurt a lot and you're not gonna like be able to support the pain and so I just listened <laughs> my mom didn't tell me to not wash your hair but I have heard something like to not wash your hair after birth I don't know why if you guys know why if you know the myth comment it down below me want to know walk slow and and that leads me to weight and fast like this is the process you will see when you give birth you automatically lose weight because your baby weight I mean your baby's weight and the placenta and the fluids so at the end of my pregnancy, I was 124, which probably some of you are like, that's like nothing. But before that, I was 93 pounds, so I ended up gaining 31 pounds. My baby was 7 pounds, and I don't know how much the placenta weighs or my fluids. So one week postpartum, I lost 17 pounds, which was a lot. But also, throughout my pregnancy, I was told to not eat a lot of arenas. Bread is like what makes you gain a lot of weight later on. It'll be hard to lose that baby weight if you want to lose it. As of my stomach, I took a picture every day for the first week. And as of for the fajas, I used Colombian fajas. I actually didn't have one of my own. The mall was closed from where I get them from, or my mom gets them from. So I ended up using my mom's fajas that she uses when she's skinny. So I would use her smallest sizes. And they weren't super tight on me, so I was still comfortable. I feel like they help so much because they just hold everything together while you're sleeping, laying down getting up, walking around, maybe like 30 days postpartum when everything opened up again, the malls, my mom went really quick to get my fat hat and I came back and the one I have right now squeezes the shit out of me. There are different materials and some are tighter. I would have my fat hat on 24 seven. I would sleep with it, I'd get up with it, except when I shower. So yeah, like I was trying to get my stomach back in. I'll be posting a picture uh, and a video of my stomach one day postpartum. And as you can tell, you're left with this pouch. It's like sagging and your skin is like really not tight and it's like jiggly I can tell like my belly button looks really weird it looks just like a line if you guys are curious I did not put on the faja right after birth I put it on the day I came home which is two days after I gave birth when you're putting on the faja it doesn't hurt your stomach like if you're touching it and stuff it doesn't hurt I will be inserting the faja name brand for the ones that are interested I don't have a shirt on right now, I just have the bra on the freaking faja But this is the extra small one that I feel like actually does something It cuts out right here And it is also a zipper kind That you have to like clip in So yeah, it's like a one size, you can't make it tighter And then the side Which helps me, you know This is the one This is the one that is a small and it goes all the way to your thighs and i also wear this one's mine this one and the one i have on right now is mine and this is the brand and they're probably like a little bit more than a hundred dollars and i really like the material because i feel like it actually does something and this is the one i wore like after i came home which is a small i believe and this material is a little bit different. I like how this one fit also, just that it didn't really squeeze me the way I wanted it to. So this was the one, but it's still a good one because my mom really likes it. And also when I got home, I started wearing the postpartum underwears and I felt so comfortable in them because they'd be like an extra layer of support. And then I started, when I came home also, I started using regular pads. So yeah, I guess you can say my bleeding wasn't that bad. The important part is to have support so that you can help your stomach and yeah i mean that's at least something i would advise you to but you do whatever you want and i did not wear the faja the full 40 days i probably wore it 35 out of the 40 days uh, this was my stomach two days postpartum and i'll be showing you yeah. by the way you guys don't judge my stomach and i'm not naked i just have my underwear really low and my stomach looks really really ugly in these videos so I'll be showing the picture with the faja and without it and also so like my belly like it looked wrinkly my belly button and yeah I'll be showing you the process
within one week like i said i lost 17 pounds and then now i'm seven weeks postpartum and i'm 102 so let's see how much i lost so i've lost 22 pounds out of my 31 but i'm fine like this because i'm not trying to be underweight my stomach went down a lot and i know it did i want to say something real quick i don't know if this helped but i'm just gonna put it out there like, while i was pregnant i would drink raspberry leaf tea and supposedly that helps your uterus tone your uterus for labor um it also helps it it helps it like not be swollen or something like that so i believe it did help i'm telling y'all like i did my best to try and do little things to help my body okay so while wearing the fajas i feel like they also limit you with eating and that leads me to the next topic food wise i did cheat i did not like watch my diet that much my mom tried to feed me caldo like every day but 40 days is way too long for me so i did cheat and, but i didn't listen y'all i was hungry and if you're breastfeeding i i don't know if it's just me i was like i would get so hungry so fast and i would want to eat a lot yeah but the caldo is supposed to help your like your milk come down so this is stuff i was not supposed to eat which i didn't because it affects your baby in your breast milk so don't eat broccoli egg watermelon lemon cabbage corn chocolate even though i'd still sneak in some chocolate i just love chocolate um soda i completely cut off caffeine now like i just take like a trago just for like the antojo it does affect the baby and i believe there's more and if you know anything more like it affects your baby like it gives your baby colic or something comment it down below i'll inform myself more and throughout the 40 days uh, my mom helped me out a lot with taking care of the baby after the 40 days my mom lended me the baby she said here this is your baby you gotta take care of him and yeah she lended it to us and i want to talk about body changes now but before that i want to talk about the six week checkup and i did not know this and i'm informing you so you know they check you completely naked they check your boobs if you breastfeed if you don't i don't know if they do they also check your mm -hmm, your coochie they stick up something like part of their hand and then they have to feel around your pelvic area i believe and it is very uncomfortable but i'm just telling you so you know what to expect after you have a baby because i did not know when i went i was like oh you know they're just gonna tell me that i'm fine i'm back to normal i can start exercising and i did get cleared to exercise but i did not know all that i was like completely naked i was like what the heck is gonna go on i'm talking way too fast but anyways some of the body changes i noticed was obviously i'm not the same you probably are never the same after you have a baby so one big difference i noticed was my rib cage as your baby's growing it's growing up and all your organs are moving up and so your rib cage gets bigger and i don't know if it goes back to normal because it's the bones like your bones don't really go like this so yeah if it doesn't go back then i mean i can't do nothing about it my butt didn't get like big like it just got wider so now i have more hips and before getting pregnant i was like really really skinny but i wasn't narrow and now you can tell a little bit um i do have stretch marks on my butt and i feel like it was the rapid gain weight and of it growing and like you know you gaining weight while pregnant and stretch marks i know they're normal but i guess what really sucks about them is that you can't really do anything about them they're kind of just there forever and maybe they'll fade away maybe they won't and my boobs aren't the same i mean even though they were small they're not the same because like they fill up they go back down they're not like super saggy like hanging down but they're not like as firm skin as they were my skin isn't normal like it's not like super tight how it was my stomach i still have a dark line and i'm seven weeks postpartum i already started my period which i thought i wasn't because with your breastfeeding my doctor told me it's usually supposed to come back three to six months after you give birth these are changes that you know they're, all, they're always going to be with me and it's all part of the process of having a baby and i love my baby i did get taller i don't know if I was supposed to, but I did get taller. I got like an inch taller, not much. And my feet also grew during pregnancy, so now I'm like a size five and a half, and I was like a five. I'll be showing my stomach and a picture before pregnancy, and I did want to mention that just because I'm skinny doesn't mean that I can have a baby and bounce back. I was really, really skinny, tiny, and then like a seven pound baby. My stomach wasn't huge, but it was still big for me. It stretches out your stomach a lot. And this was just how my stomach went down because I'm kind of happy of where I am. I'm not mad. It's just like the dark line, stretch marks, stuff like that. My overall point is everybody's process is different and this is just mine. And I'm just going to show y'all. Right now, I'm wearing a crop top because I'm home and I'm, doing, I'm not doing anything besides a video. Nobody's watching my stomach. But I do not wear crop tops publicly because I'm, I don't want to show my dark line. I had heard that sometimes it 
goes away and sometimes it doesn't but this is what I look like oh my god I have like a jacket on so you can't really tell my bad so yeah this is my stomach my belly button ended up really sinking in like a lot and it, it is a little bit like wrinkly in the inside around here it's kind of dark I don't know why it wasn't like that before and then the dark line of course you can still tell it might like crooked to the side <laughs> but yeah all I wear is nursing bras now and my boobs got bigger and I need to get new bras yeah like you can kind of tell but also like my skin wise like over here I have like a little long hita okay let me just say this I'm not complaining I'm just telling y'all like everything what like different about me because I did not have this still I fit in all my clothes that I used to before like my jeans are like a little bit tighter but that's fine uh, but like yeah my Lila I can pull like oh my god I'm sorry I'm like stuttering now I can pull like my skin a little bit but I mean and stretch marks wise I do have some there this side is the worst this one's like really purple red ones but this one is like fading and I didn't have some on this side but it ended up showing after I gave birth so I don't know they're like right here and this side is the worst this one's like all the way over here and then I have like one stretch mark right here it's like a little line but do you mind but whatever and this was just if you were curious and yes thank you for watching and when you have your baby don't forget to take care of yourself it's okay to take care of yourself and your baby as well don't be afraid to ask for help because i sure did i didn't want to ask for help because i thought i could do it myself but no i couldn't but yeah see you guys in my next video don't forget to turn on your post notifications and i'll be updating y'all on my stomach of how it looks when i start exercising i just did my first ab workout because i know my abs are not how they used to be and I haven't been wearing my faja recently but I will be because I've been eating a lot and it's gonna affect me like I'm gonna gain weight and I don't want to I'm just trying to keep this booty big okay whatever I need um I act weird at the end because I feel like not a lot of people watch it you know it's only some people also follow me on Instagram I'll leave it right here I do post my baby like sometimes I feel like I'm not really super duper into social media but i kind of want to be you know like i want to post my life a little bit more thank you guys so much for the support and i'll be inserting some clips of baby andres bye bye I'm like holding him with one hand in my leg this is my baby okay okay i understand